Patients never stop. Um, it's always been there. I think uh, already the expectation getting into the national team is high. And then obviously we know we're a results-driven country, um, you know, and the fans don't expect anything less. And all I can say is that this team will put in that effort, will put in that performance to possibly get the result that we want. And uh, we're coming up against the highly rated uh, USA. I mean, they've won the World Cup too many times. Um, will you look at the rankings of Banyana after the World Cup? Does that give our team a boost to, you know, match that level? Look, it really gives us a boost. Uh, we know when we play against the better ranked countries, we have to get positive results to also increase our ranking. Um, this team has shown, you know, at the World Cup, um, you know, that they can mix it with the best. Yeah, you have, um, they might not have won the World Cup, but for me, they still ranked up there with the best. Um, you know, the, every team goes through a little bit of a transition period and playing at home and after the World Cup, um, you know, the fans weren't happy. So they would want to go out and put up a performance and that will really motivate our players to put up a similar performance to get a positive result. Considering that the second game, you know, is a send-off for Megan Rapino, so there'll be lots of celebrations, but we'll be out there to get a result. Coach, um, realistically, um, how far are we in terms of standards to these uh, top-ranked sites? I think the World Cup has shown that we're there or thereabouts, but I think um, it's important that we get that professionally. It's important that players train at a certain level every day, not having to worry about going to work, um, making sure that they can train um, you know, and concentrate on, on football itself. And having a professional league, league you're obviously also going to attract players from the continent and hopefully the better players. It will also increase the level of the league. I think it's important that we get that league going uh, because, yes, the Hollywood bets has improved, but not the standard where, where we want it to be. It's a step in the right direction, but it's important that we get that professional league going. You see now cricket has done it, um, and you I already saw yesterday at, you know, the team Hall of Fame, the young girl was talking about, you know, now having to concentrate on cricket alone, uh, which will really change the way cricket is played and will really change the levels of cricket. And similarly with football, we need that as of yesterday. Otherwise, all this hard work done at the World Cup, we're going to be speaking about um, having a professional league again at the next World Cup or speaking about similar things. So it's imperative, you know, that corporates come on board to make sure that we get that league started sooner rather than later. But you didn't make uh, too many changes uh, of, to this uh, squad. Uh, was it a case of uh, perhaps continuity or just uh, there was no one standing out that uh, you wanted? It's a little bit of both. Um, the league has only been restarted for two weeks, so there wasn't a lot to see. But you also want to reward you know, the players that were at the World Cup because they did magnificently. And you also want to have that consistency considering that you, know, you have a, a, a qualifier coming up uh, not so far away. Um, also to make sure, um, you know, um, and give other players um, replacing uh, Bambanani and, uh, and Rafiwe Jani also an opportunity to show. But it's important that we have the consistency. And as I say, that's all we look for, um, you know, amongst players, the consistency. As I said, I was a bit disappointed, you know, after the long break. Um, but it's understandable, I suppose. It's like restarting the season. So in the in beginning, there is going to be a bit of rustiness as well. Coach, I'm looking at the, uh, the the standard that you've set as South Africa in the in the eyes of the world. I mean, everybody knows what you can do now. How much is it now to deal with the players whose um, names are all over the world that they are known about and they, they are exploits in the World Cup, what they've done? Um, how, how do you look at these girls and how do they look at themselves after all of that, the heroics of the World Cup? Look, this group is very level grounded. Um, they have shown that uh, they can step up at any time. They have shown that they're able to step up and they have that mentality. I think you don't need any motivation when you play against the USA. Um, and they won't need any motivation. They know it's another game where they can test themselves. They know it's another game where they can show their performances at the World Cup wasn't a fluke because um, they've put up magnificent performances throughout the World Cup. And here's an opportunity to show again and an opportunity to put yourself in the window. As we spoke about, you know, players getting contracts abroad, here's another opportunity for clubs out there to, if they were not sure, here's the opportunity to, for them to say, I really want that player. Um, and, and playing against the U.S., it's, it's uh, no motivation needed. Um, they're still one of the best teams in the world. I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the Kresane Twins coach. Um, some of us have been looking at them individually and collectively for some time, and finally they get to be within the same team. Um, what, what, what is it that you see 
in them individually and collectively. We know Noxy is very skillful and very talented and her strength is to take on players, um, you know, and she's done that um, over, over, over a period of time. We also know that she's multifunctional. We've played her through the middle before we've played her on the left wing. With her sister, Sinatolo, she's an attacking midfielder. Um, you know, Zelinda is in that position. Um, there's not many in that position. So we're always looking at getting depth. Um, we've watched and I've had conversations with her on how it is that we're going to play and how we might how we might use her. But it obviously all boils down to training, you know, how they perform in training to be able to give them an opportunity. Um, but we have to look at that first. Um, we've had twins before, um, the Shamasi twins as well. Um, not in the same team, but we've had the one and then the other one. Um, this was probably the first time that we have a set of twins in the national senior team. They've played together at youth level, both under 17 and under 20. The same with the uh, Shamasi twins. Um, so it will be uh, challenging. Possibility of playing them together? Uh, I can't give mm. you that answer right now. Um, you know, the players have to raise their hands to make sure. Um, you know, they, they put up the, they, they raise their hands to get into the starting lineup because at the end of the day, the training or how you do a training will dictate who we start. Coach, just uh, going back the... on to um, obviously Banyana being noticed and seen. I mean, the US, a top side, they could have picked any team really to uh, give uh, Megan a farewell, but they picked Banyana. What does that say about uh, the South African national team <clears throat> at this at this level? I've always said it before. Um, when we were ranked 54th, um, teams wanted to play us. It's uh, something different that we bring. I think a lot of countries struggle with the ball played over, and we're very good at that. Uh, a lot of countries struggle to break us down. Um, and I think in the past, the U.S. struggled to break teams down. And before the World Cup in 2019, we played them. And when I spoke to Jill Allah, she said, you know, they struggle to break teams down and playing against us. Um, you know, we have that um, compactness. The same with the Netherlands coach back then, Mark Parsons. Because we were still in preseason, we hadn't started our league. He said similar things. We hold on to the ball. Um, we play that ball behind, which they struggle with. Um, you know, so that's what what we bring. We 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 can create opportunities. That is what we bring to challenge other teams. And I think, you know, our ranking doesn't do justice to how we play. But unfortunately, that is the way the rankings is. And I think maybe we need to have another look at the rankings. You know, we beat 36 in Costa Rica. Um, you know, South Korea was so high, highly ranked at the World Cup. You know, uh, lost in the World Cup to Morocco as well. So. You know, the rankings don't do justice to, to, to the quality of the teams. And I think especially for countries on the African continent, if you don't get to play outside of the continent, your ranking doesn't really go up because just Nigeria is higher ranked than us. If you lose to an opponent, you actually drop a lot of points. So, you know, going forward, we need to play the better countries to try to keep that momentum as well, but also to challenge and test ourselves all the time. Coach, as a follow-up to that, uh, how big is it uh, to for Banyana Banyana to feature in... Uh... Megan Rapinoe's uh, farewell, and uh, what can you say about her? Because uh, she's a legend. Eh? I think it's huge. I think she's most probably not just as a player, but an activist for women's football. Um, she's been huge in the world, throughout the world, and has done magnificently for the USA. And for us to be part of that, it's incredible. I think uh, a lot of the players in the, that's played before and players that are currently playing have looked up to her, not just as a player, but as an activist, and I think she's been huge for women's football. So we're really blessed to be part of that send-off of hers, and hopefully we can make it not such a good send-off. <laughs> uh, coach, um, fresh from the from the World Cup, and given the fact that Banyana um, set the bar high as far as um, the African teams that were in the competition are concerned, um, can you say that it's, it's maybe a little bit premature to, to, to say that the group, including the coaching staff, are... Uh, under pressure to, to, to defend their Wafcon uh, crown because, I mean, um, you performed well at the World Cup and you set records, etc. I think Wafcon is very far away. Um, it's only next year, but we have a final qualifier in November, December. Um, we only look at what's right in front of us right now to prepare for that. Because you first want to make sure that you qualify before you actually go to the tournament. We have, obviously, this. We have the Kosafa. We have um, the Olympic qualifying, then we have the WEFCON qualifier, and the USA is idle preparation to get us ready for that. Make, make no mistake, we, uh, there is going to be pressure in going back to the WEFCON and or wanting to, to retain it, because that is the most difficult. Everybody wants to knock you off, but uh, uh, the group is very level-headed. Um, they take it in their stride and face what's ahead of them and then carry on with what happens after. So uh, there is going to be pressure, not just from the fans, but from everybody else. 
Who's the absence of uh, Bambanani and Fifi? How big of a blow is it to Banyana Fedo? I think it's huge. Um, they've shown the quality that they bring, but I also think that the players that we've selected, uh, Tisetra has shown the quality. So she came in for Bambanani during that match, and we brought Wendy in in place of Jermaine at the time, but uh, Kolosa has also shown that she can step up. Um, Robin has shown that she can step up. Bungeka has shown that she can step up. So it's all up to these players now to step up. And like we always say, when we bring in players, we want to make sure that we create that depth um, for situations like this. Because not just one player, it's two really good players, two top players, but each and every player in our squad is a key player. But you rightfully say that they are top players. And I'm sure others are saying, here's an opportunity for me to get more game time. Here's an opportunity for me to show the coach when she selects again. Maybe I need to be in the, in the starting lineup. And coach, um, you, 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 you. Um, I'm, I'm interested to really find out in terms of um, what what would you put it down to in terms of why why are we um, in this position of like the game is not being funded, and the reason I'm asking this you keep you keep on um, bringing up the fact that you guys have to prove yourselves, and um, is it is it in line with the funding? Do you think that um, you guys have to prove yourselves that you you're worthy of the funding? And obviously you mentioned the cricket they reached the finals mm -hmm. of the World Cup earlier this year. Is it is it in line? Um, with the, with the funding, the fact that you have to prove yourselves. I'd like to be in the room with uh, sponsorship uh, people because, um, you know, you want a product that's going to give you mileage. And I think Banyana has done that. Two successive Olympics, uh, two successive World Cups, four successive the Safa Cups, a successive RAFCON finals and winning it, finally getting to the, the last 16. I'm not sure what still needs to be done. Um, maybe someone can tell us, um, you know, what it is that they're looking for as corporates out there because uh, Cecil took a brave decision when they went out of men's football. Um, they were sponsoring the under-23 team, better known as the Amagluglug. They were sponsoring them and came in and took a brave decision. And as a sponsor, I think they're extremely happy. And I think the other sponsors must be thinking, we missed out, you know. So maybe some sponsorship gurus need to tell me what more needs to be done because this team has shown their worth and their quality over and over. Thank you so much, Coach.